Okay, so it's a pleasure to introduce um, uh, Jose Figueroa Fora uh, for his second lecture, and uh, it's uh, space times um, G structures. So, Jose, please. Okay, great, great to see you guys again. Uh, right, so let me remind you what uh, happened uh, two weeks ago. So I just prepared one slide already without having to write it in, in live. So, um, <clears throat> So I introduced these three uh, notions of uh, space-time, the kind of the classical space-times, if you wish, uh, Minkowski space-time, Galilei space-time, and Carroll space-time. And this you can understand. You can understand Minkowski if you want as the you know flat Lorentzian manifold. And then you there's two limits you can take by essentially uh, formally thinking of the speed of light as something you can dial. And if you dial it to infinity, you get Galilei spacetime. If you dial it to zero, you get uh, Carroll spacetime. And they each come with their own kind of geometrical structure. So of course, in the case of Minkowski, you just have the, the Minkowski inner uh, metric. Um, but in the case of uh, Carroll and, uh, and Galilei, the metric degenerates. And what you have in effect is no longer a pseudo Riemannian structure, but or rather, you know, you, you don't have a metrical structure anymore. You have something else. So in the case of um, Galilei, remember you had this this uh, clock and this ruler. Uh, this delta is the proper distance. So that's like the, the Lorentzian uh, metric. And in the case of Carroll, what you have is a Carrollian vector field and a so-called spatial metric. But anyway, the point is that each of these model uh, space times are homogeneous spaces of a certain kinematical Lie group, and they're so-called relativity groups in, in in this language. So of course, Galilei space time is a homogeneous space of the Galilei group, uh, Minkowski of Poincaré and Carroll of Carroll. I mean, they, they, well, Minkowski and Poincaré are the only ones that have different names. The other two, uh, we give them the same names. And these groups, there are subgroups of the affine group, right? The affine group looks like general linear transformations, semi-direct product translations. And these groups are all of the form, some subgroup of the general linear group, which preserves the structures that we have, semi-direct product and translation. So, so they, all, they all have the, the, this kind of structure. And these groups, which I'm, for the purposes of this, these are not standard necessarily names, but just for the purposes of this lecture, let's call them uh, G. Gal, G. Lawrence, and, and, and G. Carolian. This turned out to be uh, well the stabilizers of a given point in the in in the space time, and these are the structure groups of the G structures that I want to study. And um, of course, G the 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 group of a G structure is is really not a group; it's really a representation. So it's really a group sitting inside GL. In this case, we're talking about four dimensional space times. Just for exposition, you could do this in any dimension. Um, the the important thing is that they're a subgroup of GL4R, so they come with a particular four-dimensional uh, representation. Um, but anyways, up to isomorphism, you can the the the, the, the structure group of the Minkowski spacetime is the Lorentz group. So this is O31 in four dimensions. Um, but the 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 groups of Carroll and Galilei they're abstractly isomorphic to the Euclidean group in three dimensions so O O three semi direct product the three dimensional translations but crucially they're not conjugate subgroups inside GL four R if indeed the as you can see they have different invariants I mean the you know this the, these are different objects so um, so they're so they're although they're abstractly isomorphic they're they're of course not not uh, not they don't give rise to equivalent geometries. Anyway, so what I want to do today is to uh, discuss. Um, uh, I'll say a few words about the, the uh, uh, adapted connections to, to these G structures, and uh, it, it, just remind you of intrinsic torsion, and then we'll we'll discuss um, uh, each of the three cases uh, in 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 that in that uh, in that light. Anyway, so uh, I won't say a lot of that because I'm sure you you're all familiar with it, but just just to set up some. Uh, notation, I suppose. Um, okay, so so we have some, you know. Well, first of all, uh, I think the last thing I said last time was just to remind you that uh, when whenever you have a G structure, there is a um, so suppose you have a G structure, so you have P uh, bundle with a structure group G, which is so this is an n-dimensional manifold, so this is a subgroup of G, L, and R. And um, there is a um, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, 
inv G invariant tensors of the n dimensional you know, Rn representation that we have, and uh, certain characteristic tensor fields on a manifold with a G structure. So this gives rise to uh, so so if we if we look at the G structures corresponding to Galilei, Minkowski, and Carroll, uh, that suggests a, a notion of Galilean geometry, uh, Lorentzian geometry, and Carrollian geometry, which is essentially uh, a G structure, but they're uniquely characterized by saying which are the invariant, which are the characteristic tensor fields. So uh, so let me just let me just point point them out. So. Um, Okay, so 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 the okay, so the characteristic tensor fields. Okay, so we we let, let's consider first. Uh, well, okay, Minkowski, everybody knows. So okay, Lorentzian geometry. So Lorentzian, what we have is a uh, is a manifold together with a uh, Lorentzian metric, right? So that's the 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 Lorentz group is the, the invariant inner product uh, in Rn of the Lorentz group gives rise to a um, in uh, Lorentzian metric on the spaceline. Galilei is slightly different. So Galilean, uh, what you have now is uh, a manifold M. I'm going to use the same notation tau and um, and gamma perhaps, but they they they're going to mean slightly different things. So so tau is going to be a one form. And it's nowhere vanishing. And uh, it's typically known as a clock one form, like in the case of Galilei space time itself. And then what about gamma? Well, remember, gamma was the ruler, right? And the ruler, what it does is it tells you the, the in, in the Galilei model, it tells you the Euclidean distance between two simultaneous events. Um, so it's actually a bilinear form on the uh, kernel of tau. But the kernel of, okay, so tau here is a one form. So its kernel gives rise to a uh, co-dimension one subbundle of, of TM. And this, and, and gamma wants to be a metric there, but that you want, you want to promote it to a tensor field. It's something that lives in the symmetric square of the dual of the kernel of tau, but that's not inside T star M. So what you do is you, you, you consider the co-metric. So the, the inverse, um, so, so this gamma is not the same gamma as before, um, it's really going to be um, some um, section of the symmetric square of TM. And uh, it has the property that it's positive semi-definite at every point, and it has co-rank one, and, uh, and the kernel is, is uh, spanned by tau. So basically, if you think of this as a bilinear form on one forms, um, so it's co-rank one and positive semi-definite. Yeah, that's Galilean structure and Carolian. It's well, it's a manifold together with a vector field and H. And now this is fine. So kappa is a nowhere vanishing vector field. And H is so-called spatial metric. So it's it's a, it's a section of symmetric square of T star. And again, it has it's the same properties as before. It has Co rank one is positive semi definite. By the way, I mean, there are such things as pseudo Carolian structure where uh, H doesn't have to be positive semi definite, it just has to have co rank one, and then uh, in, it has some signature which is not, uh, you know, uh, it's not positive semi definite, it's just, you know, so it could be, could be pseudo Lorentzian or whatever, I mean, sub Lorentzian or something like that. But anyway, but here let's just do this. And uh, what, 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 oh yeah, and H, whatever H is it. Anyway, so these are the, uh, these are the, the, the geometries that are, um, let's say, that, that, that have Galilei, Minkowski, and Carroll space time as their models. Um, and then we are interested in connections which are adapted to, so, so for example, an Erisman connection on this uh, G structure on the principal bundle. Um, well, this 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 gives rise uh, to a affine connection on M, because remember that the tangent bundle of M is isomorphic to the fake tangent bundle, which is an associated vector bundle of P. So you get um, you get a causal connection on the 
fake tangent bundle, which you can then use in the soldering form, transport back to an affine connection on M. And this affine connection has the property that it uh, uh, parallelizes the characteristic tensors, right? So, so let me just say it in words. So Erisman connection on P uh, gives rise to um, affine connection, let me call it delta, like nabla, sorry, on on M and uh, and and if you have a characteristic tensor, one of these guys, uh, this is parallel with respect to to nabla. Okay, so um, but yeah, uh, a question: uh, Do you assume tau to be closed or not? No. In fact, we will see that when we discuss. So we we will see we will see that the intrinsic torsion of an adapted uh, Galilean connection is in fact d tau, and d tau can can be zero. It doesn't have to be. And there are examples, of course, of all, all kinds. Um, okay, so uh, so so basically, you know that so so right. So suppose I have um, two adapted connections. So suppose. So, so this, by the way, so okay, I should have called it this affine connection. These are, of course, called. Uh, it's they're said to be adapted to the adapted to to the G structure. So suppose I give you two adapted connections. So suppose these guys are adapted. So they come from Erisman uh, connections on on P. Then the difference between two connections, as you know, is a is a tensor, right? So so nabla minus nabla prime, this is going to be um, let me call it, I don't know what's a good name. Uh, um, normally I would call it kappa, but I've used that already for the Carolian vector field. Um beta have no idea, just some name. Anyway, um so this is a tensor. Uh, so this is going to be a um Normally, what would this be? This would be a one form with values in. Um, it's a one form with values in, uh, I guess, endomorphisms of TM. However, if the if the connections are adapted, they they live typically in a sub bundle of endomorphisms of TM. Mm -hmm. Is um, is the bundle is the adjoint bundle? So so remember that the Lie group is sitting inside GLN. So the Lie algebra is sitting inside endomorphisms of the fake tangent bundle um, and via the soldering form that defines uh, so adjoint bundle on on so this is this is actually so so this is actually um, so actually at P. Uh, anyway, so um, yes. Can you just remind me? You keep referring to the fake tangent bundle, but I, I I forget what that terminology refers to. Oh right, sorry. Okay, so um, so remember that G is sitting inside G L N R. So um, so so G acts it has a representation on R N. So now what you consider is the um, associated vector bundle to that representation. And uh, the so 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 this 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 bundle this is called a fake tangent bundle. Okay, I didn't make it up. Uh, these people call this. Uh, really? The point is that the soldering form gives you an isomorphism between that bundle and the tangent bundle. Uh, okay. okay. It's the other way around, right? It's, it's, uh, so 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 you get uh, so the soldering I... form gives you an isomorphism between T and. What's his reason? Does that answer the question? Or? Yeah, yeah, but good. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You answered, but I mean, wh why do you say that actually beta takes values in endorses of fake? I think it's, it's standard connection takes values in endorses of usual tension bond. Yeah, that's what I wrote. No? NTM. Okay, fine. No, did not. It's not. I mean, uh, I, I agree. You just say it's fake. That's why it was questioned. It's just that it's not necessary. I mean, it, it, this actually takes because it's adapted. It actually takes values in a sub bundle of n of endomorphisms of tangent bundle. Is this the is the 
the the those endomorphisms which are in the image of G, well, they're in G. So that's the that that bundle with fiber G is the adjoint bundle to the the B. But anyway, uh, okay. So suppose I have these two these two um, two adapted connections. Then I can ask what happens to the torsion. Uh, what you know, these are affine connections, so they have torsion. So what is the difference between the torsions? So um, okay, maybe I can do it in down here. So oops. Uh, so the torsion of delta, maybe I want to call it delta prime minus nabla prime minus nabla equals beta. So the torsion of nabla prime uh, is the torsion of. Um, let me let me do it like this. The the torsion of nabla plus beta, which is nabla prime, is uh, the torsion of nabla uh, plus uh, some uh, linear map. Uh, well, bundle map in this case, but I mean it's all induced from from G equivariant linear maps. Um, some some so what is this d beta? Um, okay, so so this d. Okay, so um, well, uh, I don't want to introduce too much notation, but um, essentially uh, this. Okay, this this this. Is d beta if you act on two vector fields i guess um is going to be um uh, well beta of x and the uh soldering form on y uh, minus beta on y soldering form x i guess um the point is that uh this 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 um this map de delta which is ma i mean uh, uh, this this del um i'm thinking of it as a as a bundle map it's a map between between bundles and hence between sections but it actually because it's g equivariant it, it it's induced from a map between representations of g so it's a purely linear algebraic thing so yeah. what you have is the following you have I think you forgot this third term because what you wrote is not a tensor. You have to subtract state of commutator. No, why? Uh, I, I don't think it's it's tensorial in X and Y what you wrote. Well, beta is a tensor and theta is uh, it's a soldering form. X and Y vector fields? Well, okay, so. Um, I guess I'm thinking of this as vector vector fields on the, on P. So this is happening on P. Yeah, if you multiply uh, x by function f, it's uh, you will get differential of s. It's not it's not the ram. No, it's not the. It's, this is just the this is the Spencer differential. It's not the the ram. Anyway, let me let me tell you the linear algebraic version of this, which is probably much uh, much 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 simpler. So. Um, so what is a fiber where this beta lives in? So this is one form with values in this sub bundle of endomorphisms of tm which looks like the Lie algebra no so so as a vector space the fiber looks like uh g tensor uh okay let me let me introduce notation just just so that i don't have to write rn all the time so uh, i'm going to call v so v is not an abstract vector space but it's my notation for rn just so i don't have to write rn all the time anyway so um so this beta lives it's it it lives in a in a bundle that has that has that is associated to this representation, sorry, uh, this representation of uh, of the structure group. And what it does, it maps it to uh, V tensor lambda. And what is it? Well, what it is is the following: it's a composition. Uh, it's a composition. Of, remember that G is sitting inside uh, GLV, right? And this looks like uh, V tensor V star. So what 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 uh, what this delta is is the following: you use the isomorphism. So let me write it again uh, as a composition of maps. I first use the isomorphism. So G is sitting inside um, GLV, which is V tensor V star tensor V star, right? And then what I do is I alt, I'll, I I skew symmetrize in the V stars. So, so this, if you want, this is the representation. 
tensor identity on V star, and if and the representation of G is sitting inside G of V. And the and this one is just identity of V tensor with the uh, wedge two. So this becomes V tensor lambda two V star. Anyway, the point is these are cl clearly G equivariant maps. So you have a G equivariant linear map between two G representations. So this lives in a, there's a, there's a four term exact sequence associated to this linear map with the kernel on one side and the co-kernel on the other, right? This happens everywhere. So you have a kernel, let, let's call this map D as I said. So you have kernel of D, um, G tensor V star, D V tensor lambda two V star, and this goes to the co-kernel. Now, there are associated vector bundles to all these representations of the structure group. And by the soldering form, you can view them as bundles over the manifold, tensor bundles over the manifold. And they have different interpretations. So um, let's see. So, okay, so these are the difference between adapted connections, right? So it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's the beta that I wrote. This is the effect of the torsion uh the difference of the, the this is the difference between the torsions of these two adapted connections the kernel of d is the changes you can do in the connection which do not change the torsion and the co-kernel of d is the part of the torsion if you wish that doesn't depend on the connection right so um so we are interested in uh we're interested in this bit here which is the so-called intrinsic torsion Okay, so the first thing is that, of course, from you know, if you're trained Riemannian geometry, you never see this because the fundamental theorem of Riemannian geometry says that there exists a unique connection which is metric compatible, which is adapted to the G structure of, of the Riemannian of the Riemannian geometry. So it tells you that there exists a unique torsion which has zero a unique connection which has zero torsion. So uh, the fact that there exists a connection with zero torsion says that uh, the intrinsic torsion vanishes, and the fact that it's a unique one says that the kernel vanishes. So once you fix the torsion, it doesn't have to be zero. But I mean, once you fix the torsion, any connection of the any 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 modification of the connection will change the torsion. So the kernel is zero. So in the case of um, let me just say it in, in words. So so e.g. Uh, let's look at the Lorentzian or more generally pseudo Riemannian, but let's say in the, in the Lorentzian case. Um, the kernel of D is the uh, co kernel of D is equal to zero. And that's the fundamental theorem in this language of, uh, you know, well, of Riemannian geometry or Lorentzian geometry. It says that there exists a unique uh, metric compatible version three connection. Metric. Okay, so Lorentzian geometry is not particularly interested from this perspective. So, uh, however, the other ones, um, the other ones are. So the Carolian and the um, and the um, um, and, and and Galilean. Uh, so let's look at Galilean first. I mean, so um, let me go to the next page and let's let's look at the case of Galilean intrinsic torsion. So this goes back, by the way, to um, this. This this goes back to uh, work of Künstler in 1972. Except he missed when when somehow he missed one of the possible intrinsic torsion classes. He thought there were only two natural classes, but there are actually three. Um, anyway, so okay, so let's look at this uh, sequence. So. And remember, this G is what I call G-Gal, right? So G-Gal. Um, uh, 
Okay, so the first thing is that the kernel and the co-kernel, you can prove, I'm not going to do it because it takes time. So I'm just telling you results. So the kernel and the co-kernel are isomorphic as G modules. So that's the first thing. So, so kernel of D is isomorphic to the co-kernel of D. But in fact, they're both isomorphic to uh, the exterior square of D star. And these are isomorphisms as, uh, as G modules. Okay, um, the second thing is that this module is, is indecomposable but not irreducible, which uh, is a source of headache, but okay, uh, it's, it's what, what it is. So, so lambda 2v star is, um, is, is reducible, sorry, it's not irreducible. Uh, but it's in the composer. Well, so why is it that it's not, um, it's why, why isn't the, uh, why is it not irreducible? Well, it has a clear sub module. Um, so R tau wedge V star sitting inside uh, lambda two V star uh, is a sub module because tau is invariant. Okay, uh, now you need to work out what is the um, what is the the map uh, down to the co-kernel. What does it look like? So I claim that uh, so we have the following. So we have v tensor, I guess, uh, lambda two v star, and you can uh, map project down to the co-kernel. And if you believe what I just said, the co-kernel is um, isomorphic to uh, wedge to the star. And what is this map? Well, this takes something in here, T, which is bilinear skew-symmetric map from, you know, V values in V, uh, and, and it sends it to uh, tau composed with T. That's the, you can, you can work this out, that this is the, this is what this map looks like. So uh, essentially what you're doing is this, you know, you take something in V tensor and wedge to V star, and you contract the V part with tau. And that gives you something in which to be star. And that happens to be the. Okay, but let me show you that this actually uh, is a um is is D tau. So suppose you have an adapted connection. Then one thing you know is that it parallelizes the uh characteristic tensors in particular. Uh it it parallelizes it, it leaves tau, uh it kills tau. So let's um, let's uh, let's see. Uh, so one consequence of this is that if you compute, uh, suppose suppose now x and y are vector fields on M, and let's compute x acting on the function tau y. Now I could expand that using the nabla, right? That's the same thing as nabla x on tau y. So, but nabla on tau is zero. So this is the same thing as tau of nabla x y. And this is because not that how it's it. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, let let's do x tau y minus y tau x. So what is this? Well, uh, by what I've just said, this is nabla x y, and I'm using linearity uh, nabla y x. And what is that? Well, that's uh, that's the torsion plus the uh, bracket, right? This is tau of the bracket of xy plus uh, the torsion applied to xy. And therefore, um, I can uh, bring the bracket to the other side. And what I find is x tau y minus y tau x minus tau of xy. That's the same thing as tau applied to, so let me write it as tau composed with this guy, x1. But you recognize the left-hand side of this as, of course, d tau. This is just d tau of x1. So what we have just shown is that tau composed with t nabla, this is the same thing as d tau. And since tau composed with the torsion is the mapping down to the to the intrinsic torsion. The intrinsic torsion is is precisely d tau. So 
uh, intrinsic torsion is is measured by the And of course, as 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 you would expect, it doesn't depend on the connection, right? The tau is just depends on the on the geometric structure that you have. Okay, so there are three possibilities uh, depending on you. So now, now what you have to do is you you need to look at all the sub -mod all the G sub modules of the space of torsions and see what uh, or or if you wish on on sorry on on the space of intrinsic torsion. So on 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 wedge two V star, you you look at its decomposition into into G modules. It's not it's not reducible. But there is a lattice of submodules in there. It turns out there's there's three. There it could be zero, it could be uh, this 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 guy, or it could be generic. And therefore, you have three types of uh, intrinsic torsions. So let me just tell you what they they have names because they appear in in a not in this context, but in a different context in physics. So um, so there's there's three. Uh, classes, let's say, of intrinsic torsion. So, so zero. So this is this is um, this is the tau is equal to zero, and of course people call this in physics they call it they, they call it torsionless uh, Galilean structures or newton cartan structures, something. Um, then you have uh, the one corresponding to the module that looks like that. And this is the module where, uh, okay, the tau is not zero, but the tau wedge tau is zero. And people call this twistless uh, torsion. So what that says is that in either, you know, in either of these two cases, so when the, tor the tau is zero or the tau wedge tau is zero, that says that the, the kernel of tau is an involutive uh, distribution, right? So in both of these cases, uh, it says that Kurt tau in TM is involutive. So a Galilean manifold with uh, either uh, with zero intrinsic torsion or uh, twistless uh, torsion, torsion um, is foliated by uh, hypersurfaces, and this this would be the hypersurfaces of simultaneity. This is the analog of this hy hypersurfaces of simultaneity of of Galilei spacetime, and of course, then you have the case where this is generic, so um, lambda two v star, let's say, and then the tau which tau is different from zero, and and people just call this torsional without any further uh, whatever. And in that case, uh, you don't have uh, foliation of uh, you cannot define. Uh, sub sub manifolds of simultaneity. Okay, um, right. So um, so the thing was that so so Kunzle in his uh, analysis of Galilei's structure, which is a very nice paper actually, this 1972 paper. Uh, he proves a number of other things. Uh, he actually writes down, um, but anyway, he 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 only at the end when he discusses the possible intrinsic torsions, he says there's two natural things: either the tau is zero or the tau is not zero. So he he missed this this for some reason this middle one, um, but I guess he wasn't looking at the modules sub modules of the space of intrinsic torsions very carefully. Anyway, uh, one more thing before we go on to Carolian is the fact that um, you can uh, you can obtain Galilean Galilean geometries um, by uh, sort of null Kaluza Klein reductions of Lorentzian geometries. So let me just mention this. So so Galilean Galilean manifolds, let's say, uh, can be uh, constructed by null reduction. Uh, from Lorentzian. One dimension higher, right? So, so okay. So, how does this work? So, suppose you have um, uh, there. It could be more general than what I'm about to say. I'm going to talk about just the case of killing reduction, but it, it doesn't have to be killing reduction. So, let me just mention, uh, just give you an example. So, it's, in a, it's like an example. Suppose n g is a Lorentzian manifold of dimension n plus one. Let's say Lorentzian. Um, and suppose that C is a nowhere vanishing null, so it's a null killing vector. And 
And let's assume that it integrates to the action of uh, one parameter Lie group. So it could be a circle, a bit, bit sick maybe, uh, or, or the real line. So let's say integrating uh, to action of Let's just say of R. I mean, it could be also in principle the circle. And let's assume that you know quotienting by this action results in a manifold. So, so suppose that the action is is free and proper, or whatever, and um, and then you know you you have a quotient um, from n to n mod r, and let's let's call this guy m. So m n dimensional, little n dimensional manifold. Okay, so um, so what happens? Well, the first thing you notice is that the um, the dual one form uh, to this vector field, so the one form on n, uh, this one form is horizontal because when you act, you 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 act with you you contract with the vector field, the vector field is null. And what you get is, of course, g of xcc, and that's zero. So this is horizontal, but it's also invariant because xc is killing. So it commutes with itself, and it commutes with the musical isomorphism because it leaves symmetric invariant. So this is actually uh, so this is basic. Uh, in other words, uh, it's the pullback uh, of something which I'm going to call tau. And this is a one form on, on the quotient, so so one form on n, and that's going to be the clock. And uh, and then how do you get the uh, how do you get the ruler? Well, uh, if you think of the ruler as a bilinear on form on one forms, then uh, what you do is the following: suppose alpha and beta are one forms on M. Then what you could do is you can pull them back to N, and you can turn them into with a musical isomorphism, you can turn them into vectors and you can compute the inner product. And what you find is that this is actually uh, the pullback of a function uh, from the base. So this is this is pi star of something which I'm gonna call gamma of alpha beta. And this defines gamma to be a section of, you can show, you can check that this, this works out. Um, so this is the okay. So so what so what do we conclude that uh, m tau and gamma is uh, is a Galilean manifold? Clearly, if alpha or beta is equal to tau, then gamma on this is zero, um, just because. Uh, uh, Okay, so what happens if you, yeah, if you, if alpha, so let's say alpha is tau, so pi star of tau, that, that c, well, that's c flat, and then when you take well, that c, so that tells you that's the inner product of g of c with, uh, with something which is the pullback of something that's there. So in particular, it's, uh, it's, uh, that, that form is horizontal. So when you contract C on it, which is the same thing as taking the metric inner product of C with the with the sharp of that one form, then you get zero. So anyway, so it's, this 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 is a Galilean manifold. You can check, and this is it's it, it's not the unique construction. I mean, you can you can sometimes get Galilean structures by um, reducing not necessarily. So you have a Lorentzian manifold with a null null vector, but it doesn't have to be killing. Um, it could be parallel with respect to a metric connection with torsion, and if, if you know, and if some other condition is satisfied, then the 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 the, the quotient still has a Galilean structure. So this is not the unique way of getting it, but it's it's kind of uh, emblematic of how you would relate Lorentzian manifolds to Galilean manifolds. Okay, uh, I think this ends what I want to say about Galilean stuff. A any questions uh, at this? stage. No? Okay. So then we go to Car Carolian. So let's do Carolian uh, intrinsic torsions. Um, so uh, 
So let's just say Carolian geometries. Okay, so, um, right. So we have the same uh, exact sequence as usual. And then um, again, uh, the kernel and the co-kernel are uh, isomorphic as G modules, where G now is the Carolian structure group. Um, so, uh, so what is it? So, um, so, so, okay. So the kernel of the Spencer differential and the co-kernel, this is uh, isomorphic to the symmetric square of the uh, annihilator of the Carolian vector field. So that's the. Uh, but notice, by the way, that H, so remember the okay, Carolian geometry, just to remind you. So it's M, K, and H, right? And and H is a, uh, is a um, you know, a linear algebraically, this is, this is an element in symmetric square of the annihilator. So of course, so, 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 so H defines a, you know, so H lives in here. And it's, um, it's, um, it's G invariant. So therefore this representation is not uh, irreducible either. Uh, to, I just, just showing you that it has, it has, it has, a, it has an invariant. Um, but it turns out that it's fully reducible in, in generic dimensions. So, um, so you can, you can write, uh, the symmetric square of the annihilator of kappa uh, as follows into a direct sum of two representations. One are the, let's say, uh, okay, let me write first. It's RH, right? It's, it's, it's the line spanned by H, this invariant guy in there. And then what you can do is you can use H, um, I mean, H, on, on the annihilator of K, H is an inner product. So you can invert it and you can take a trace. You can define a, an H trace. So, so this would be the traceless guys. Right? So this, this, this would be like H traceless. And this is the, this is it in, in, uh, in the generic case. Um, so it's, it's not, it's, it's fully reducible in this case. Which is nice. So, so now what you have is uh, the following um, the following uh, submodules of symmetric square of uh, of the space of intrinsic torsion. So you have, of course, zero. Then you have uh, this guy. Then you have the traceless. And then you have the whole thing. So then you have four types of um, of um, of intrinsic torsion classes, depending on whether the you know the intrinsic torsion lives in the associated vector bundle to one of one of these four representations, either the zero or the H line or the traceless guys or the whole thing. Okay, so we need to understand, just like it happened with Galilei, we need to understand what is this isomorphism between. So so remember we have this map from um, V tensor lambda to V star where the torsions live down to the co-kernel. And then uh, this is isomorphic as I just told you to this. But the question is, what is the, what is the actual isomorphism? So let me, let me uh, write it down. So if you have something in here, T, uh, this gets sent to um, something I'm gonna call phi of T. Uh, so this is something in the symmetric square of the annihilator. So um, give me two elements of V, X and Y. And this is by definition what? It's going to be uh, H acting on tau kappa X, Y. This is a result of a calculation, which I'm not doing, but uh, X, T of kappa Y. So basically, you come, you, you take the torsion tensor, you put in the Carolian vector field kappa, and then that gives you uh, that still has a slot free, and then you you make a symmetric thing by you know symmetrizing. So you you apply x and then take the inner product using h with y, 
like here, no? you put X and then take the product with Y, or you put Y and take the product with, a, with X. So you make something symmetric. So that's the, um, that's the, um, okay, so we can, we can, we can then uh, now say, okay, let's, let's, let's see what this means geometrically. So suppose that, uh, suppose that Nabla is adapted connection. Then in, in particular, Nabla kappa uh, is equal to zero. So, um, so that tells you that the torsion, when you put in kappa and then X, let's say some vector field. So what is this? Well, this by definition is going to be, well, it's going to be Nabla kappa on X minus uh, nabla x on kappa, but that's of course zero, uh, minus uh, kappa x, right? So that's using that uh, kappa is uh, parallel, but now h is parallel because h is also a characteristic tensor. So we have nabla h uh, is equal to zero. And uh, we can just then calculate, for example, using this, we can cal calculate kappa acting on h, x, y. So it's x and y vector fields, h, x, y a function, and uh, you differentiate on uh, kappa. So you can do this in two ways. So the first thing is that, well, I can use, uh, this is the same thing as nabla k on, a, on this function. So let me use nabla to expand this out and using the fact that nabla h is zero. So this is the same thing as h uh, nabla k x y plus h, x nabla k y right this uses the fact that uh nabla h is zero but i could also think of this as the lead derivative along kappa of the function h x y so i can expand this using the lead derivative so this would be the lead derivative of kappa h acting on x y plus h of the lead derivative which is just the lead bracket I'm not running very clear uh, online. All right. So these two things are the same. So um, so let me uh, let me bring so let me let me let me rewrite this as follows: the lead derivative of h on x y. What is it? It's h of uh, it's this minus that, but this minus that is just t. So this this gives you uh, right this gives you t nabla of kappa x comma y and plus the other guy uh, h of x t nabla of kappa y. But this is precisely uh, the um, this 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 expression here. So this is precisely the isomorphism between the torsions. The, the intrinsic torsions and symmetric square of annihilator of kappa. So in other words, uh, right, so this is, just to say it, this is phi of t nabla of x and y. So in other words, the intrinsic torsion is the lead derivative of h along kappa. Okay, that's the upshot of this little calculation. So let me, Sorry, go to the next page and say that the, the upshot is that uh, the intrinsic torsion, so let me write like this, uh, just the equivalence class of torsion. This is this is the lead derivative of H along kappa. And this is very reminiscent of, uh, for example, the second fundamental form of a hypersurface in, in Riemannian geometry, with kappa being the normal vector field, right? So if you take the lead derivative of the so, so you have, you know, you have a hypersurface in a Riemannian, so not pseudo Riemannian, thing, but it's Riemannian. So you have a hypersurface in a Riemannian manifold, and you have a normal kappa, and then you compute the lead derivative of the induced metric on the hypersurface along kappa, and that's the that's the second fundamental form. So this suggests um, names for the Carolian structures uh, associated to the different intrinsic torsion classes. So if okay, so 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 what are the possible? So we have four four classes. Uh, the case zero. So, so what does that mean? That means that the lead derivative of h along kappa is zero, and that's like vanishing second fundamental form. So we call that 
uh, totally geodesic. It's just names, but they, they, they actually, I mean, I'll make some comments later that show you that they're not completely random names. Um, then there's a possibility where uh, this guy lives in R kappa, sorry, RH, what am I saying? Um, and this says that L, uh, uh, this is this is proportional to H. So this is like the, the, the trace, and F is some function. Um, and well, this is analogous to totally umbilical. When the second fundamental form is proportional to the first fundamental form. Um, okay. Uh, then there's the case where the traceless ones, so the trace of the, the H trace of, of this guy is equal to zero. This actually can be, uh, this is equivalent to saying that uh, the lead derivative of kappa or along kappa of mu, and I haven't told you what mu is. Well, if you assume that this G structure can be reduced to the connected component of the structure group, so instead of O3 is SO3, then, so O3 is some direct product R3, right? It's got to be a structure group. So, so imagine you can go to the, you, you can, for example, M is simply connected. Then you can go to the, to the, to the, to the identity component. Then there's a, there's an additional invariant tensor, which is uh, uh, sort of the volume form on, uh, no, um, so 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 I I, I didn't say it, but um, this is kind of a this 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 is a volume form. Um, let's say if any simple connected. All you need to do is be able to reduce the structure group to the uh, identity component, uh, and then there's an additional um, invariant tensor. Which is a top form, and and it's uh, it's a volume form, and then basically what it says is that this volume form is um, is the lead derivative is zero. But anyway, uh, so what is this? Well, this is this is a notion of minimal minimal hypersurface, right? And that's the case of the symmetrics traceless. And then of course the other case is a generic one, so we don't have a name for that. It's just generic. So none of the above. It's generic. Anyway, so these are the four classes of um, of Carolian um, intrinsic torsions in generic dimension. Um, and the thing is that uh, one why why okay so I said that this this these names totally geodesic umbilical whatever these are uh, suggestive, but actually. Um, Carolian geometry is the geometry of null hypersurfaces in in uh, in in Lorentzian. Well, sometimes conformal Carolian, but okay. Uh, null hypersurfaces in let me, let me say it like this: null hypersurfaces in Lorentzian manifolds admit Carolian structures, and there's a notion of a um, um, you know. Okay, so let me say it. Let me let me just say it. I mean, so okay, so so null hypersurfaces in Lorentzian manifolds are Carolian. So let's let's do the same thing as before. So suppose N G is a um, is a Lorentzian manifold. Dimension n plus one, and I guess uh, suppose uh, kappa. Let's say it's a it's a vector field on n, which is null, and let's say nowhere vanishing. And let me assume that uh, the perpendicular. So so let let me assume that this guy. Is involutive just for you can you can you don't have to I mean you can talk about you can talk about the second fundament you can talk about the second null the, the null version of the second fundamental form for distributions that are not necessarily integrable but just to give you know to, to, to make it simpler to to explain um, cons, as, assume that it's involutive so that's the same thing as saying that 
the cow flat mod kappa flat is zero. Then, uh, okay, so um, actually, they call this M because N, N looks like no. <laughs> so in fact, I already used M here. So, so okay, so now suppose that, uh, so it's involutive, so it's foliated, and let's assume that uh, N here is, is the, the image of N, I N is, is, uh, is a leaf of this foliation. Then, um, okay, uh, the first thing to notice is that kappa, of course, because it's null, it's perpendicular to itself. So kappa is tangent to n. And this is because kappa is null. And the other thing is that you can, uh, you can, you can let h, so you can think of it as a vector field on n. Right, so 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 kappa defines a vector field on N, and H is just the pullback of G to this null hypersurface, and of course it's degenerate. It's not a metric because the hypersurface is null, so it's called dimension. It's called rank one, and uh, anyway, uh, to make a long story short, N kappa. I'm, I'm, a piece of notation because I'm thinking of kappa as in n, but I mean, you can just view it as a vector field on n. And h, this is Carolian. And the intrinsic torsion of this Carolian geometry is precisely the lead derivative of, of h along kappa. And then the uh, these conditions of being uh, totally geodesic or totally umbilical or minimal or generic, uh, this is precisely what you would. Um, what you would use for these null hypersurfaces, except you have to generalize a little bit the notion of, of second fundamental form for null hypersurfaces, but, but this has been done. Uh, in fact, you can generalize it further for distributions that are not necessarily uh, um, involutive and, and you get exactly the same. The same. Um... Okay, so, um, right, so, so, um, so let me just, in two minutes, just kind of sum summarize what we've uh, learned. So, so there's these three types of geometries associated to uh, to the classical space times. Um, so Lorentzian, which we all understand, uh, Carolian. Well, let's say Galilean first. Galilean. Um, so okay, it is mg. Whatever. There's not not much you can say except Lorentzian. That's it. Uh, this guy, um, uh, this this comes in three three varieties depending on whether d tau is zero, d tau is not zero, but d tau h tau is zero, and d tau h tau is different from zero. And then we have the Carolian ones, so m a kappa h, and this this there are four of them depending on whether this guy is zero, this guy is proportional to H. Uh, the volume form is, is invariant or none of the above. And then I mentioned that um, in a way you can you can you can relate these things, right? So 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 if you have some sort of Lorentzian, so Lorentzian geometry can can uh, null null re null reduction? You can get Galilean geometry by null reduction, and uh, you can embed uh, your know, null hypersurfaces. The Carolian Carolian geometries. So you have this kind of duality, if you want. Um, and you can actually, I won't talk about this, but actually, you can you can you can make it very in in a in a certain context. Uh, and the context is um, Lie groups admitting bi-invariant structures of these types. So you can talk about Lorentzian Lie groups. You can classify them very easily. Or you can talk about uh, Galilean Lie groups, so a Lie group with a bi-invariant Galilean structure, or Carolian Lie groups, Lie groups with bi-invariant Carolian structures. And there, there is a strict duality in the sense that given a Galilean group with a with you know bi-invariant Galilean structure, uh, there exists precisely one Carolian group, which is dual in this sense. And the duality is mediated by a, a Lorentzian group of one dimension higher. 
but anyway, um, there's, there's a there's a there's a very beautiful story with Lee groups, which which in a way it's uh, it's very um, it's, it's 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 a bit more rigid than 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 this that I've explained here. Anyway, so that's uh, that that's what I wanted to say today. And then in the next lecture, what I wanted to do is to show you how these these things that they look kind of disparate. They live together in some family of so-called p brain uh, g structures, but uh, that's that's something for next time. Okay, I'll finish here now. Thanks. Questions? Ah, uh, Henrik. Yes, I think I have three questions and a comment. Uh, first question is about realizability. So for Carolian groups, uh, by the way, can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. For Carolian groups, uh, are all the uh, 16 classes uh, realizable geometrically, or is there some obstruction? I mean, can you consider? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, in the case of the groups, um, I think the I, th I think in for the case of groups, I'm afraid that I think the, the you always get uh, that's a good question. I think there are trivial intrinsic torsion. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. Good question. I honestly don't remember now. Um, so um, um, so by the way, um, I don't think so because they, uh, the the I think I think for the groups you 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 essentially get um, the the trivial intrinsic torsion classes, but you can not talk about homogeneous spaces, and um, I think they're homogeneous space they're homogeneous examples of the Galilean of all three Galilean uh, intrinsic torsion classes. Um, as far as I know, there are no ex there are no homogeneous examples of all four Carolian. But partially because maybe people haven't looked for them. I don't know. Uh, the natural examples that I know have either I, I know examples of uh, trivial intrinsic torsion class, and for example, Garrel spacetime, right? That's a trivial intrinsic torsion class. Or for example, the light cone in Minkowski spacetime that has a Carolian structure which is homothetic. So it's of the it's 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 of of this type. Sorry, where am I here? Of this type. But f is a constant. That's well, it's it would have to be because <laughs> homogeneous space uh, invariant functions are constant. But anyway, so it's a homothetic. Uh, it's a homothetic. Thing. So I'm not aware, by the way, of um, of. Uh, but they must exist. I just don't. I just don't know examples myself uh, because well, I I know a small class of examples only, I suppose. Um, but so so these two I know. And but but this too, I'm not sure. But I suppose there must be. I mean, generic null hypersurfaces and Lorentzian manifolds are bound to be generic in this sense as well. But that's uh that's an uninformed statement. I mean, I, I don't know examples of that. So that was actually my second question. Do you get any restrictions on the intrinsic torsion when you view uh, those structures that are precisely in the uh, as null surfaces in Lorentzian geometries? Right. So again, uh, so of course, uh, you know, killing horizons, they're going to be uh, uh, of, of this type, almost by definition. Uh, I know the the light cone is uh, is of that type. And the other ones, I really don't know. To be honest, I, I haven't, that's not something I've, I've looked at. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't answer. But I suppose that, um, you know, uh, all you need is a null vector field and you look at uh, or maybe geodesic congruence and all geodesic congruences. Uh, you you should be able to. There should be enough examples out there that one can just check. But I haven't done it, so I, I cannot tell you. I'm sorry. Okay, but it's uh, a good question, and I'm, one I've had myself is just that I just, you know, many things to do, and that I haven't really gone down the the rabbit hole of looking for the types of uh, of uh, to to see that they're all realized. I would be surprised that there's an obstruction to realizability. Okay. Uh, third question: Is there any hope of uh, uh, extending this duality between 
I mean, the, the concrete duality between Galilean and Carolian to their um, Cartan geometries of the corresponding types from the homogeneous ones, or even from the groups of the homogeneous models, actually. Right. So from group to homogeneous, no. In fact, for example, well, okay. Let me let me let me say. I know the story with groups, and I know the story with um, so-called spatially isotropic homogeneous spaces, and there the duality is not. Uh, is the, 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 the thing that happens at the level of Lie groups, which is kind of a very, very special thing, it doesn't translate to homogeneous spaces in general. Uh, you know, uh, the spa spatially isotropic um, homogeneous spaces, the ones with Galilean structure, are uh, they're all uh, trivial intrinsic torsion. And the ones with, and the Carolian one, some are have uh, zero intrinsic torsion and, and the light cone is the exam the, 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 the single singular example that has a uh, homothetic uh, so it's the to totally umbilical but yeah let's say it's totally umbilical but it's not uh, so uh and there is no and and oh sorry so uh, but 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 as as examples go there's no duality in the sense of one example of one type or the other. Uh, there, there, there are, in the spatially isotropic case, there are four uh, Carolian spacetimes. There's Carol spacetime itself, the Carolian limit of the sitter and anti sitter, and the light cone. But in Galilei, there are families. Uh, there, are, there, are, there, are, there's a two parameter, one parameter family in generic dimension of. Uh, Galilei, Galilean, especially isotropic spacetimes. Uh, they all have a vanishing intrinsic torsion, but the point is you have a whole one parameter family and they're really different as, uh, as, as homogeneous spaces. So there's, you know, you have four, four things in one side and uh, a continuum in the other. So the, the, the duality doesn't seem to extend. Having said that, I mean, one probably has to, that, that's because I'm looking at, I'm, I'm focusing only on the spatially isotropic ones. Maybe if you set your 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 view wider to to a larger class, maybe you 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 recover some some of this. You might recover the duality. I'm not sure, but yeah. certainly my experience with the homogeneous case is that uh, it doesn't. That's a very interesting answer. Thank you. Then I just have one final comment. Um, it's my opinion, of course, uh, but. I don't think naming one of the intrinsic uh, torsion classes minimal is a very good idea. You're going uh -huh. to end up saying stuff like you have a minimal adaptive connection of minimal type. Okay, right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this is minimal in the sense of um, you know, um, like like for minimal surfaces, right? The 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 mean the mean curvature vanishes, which is the H trace of the problem. Is just that minimal adaptive connection is already yeah. Done. Okay. Uh, I take your point. Uh, so um, I, I'm coming from a Riemannian background. <laughs> For me, minimal minimal surface makes uh, makes nice. sense. Okay. okay. Thanks. Right, thank you for answering. Well, so I have also a question. Yeah. Uh, so you you show us computation of torsions, right? So the mm H zero two Spencer cohomology. Have you computed the H12 sensor homology, the curvature. Nope. That's uh, that's of course the next step in some sense, but um, yeah, I mean I've I've, I've in, that's an extremely good question, and 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 indeed it would be the next thing to try to do to understand. So for example, one a dream would be to have some sort of um, um, classification of the possible holonomy groups of uh, of these Cartan geometries. Um, so understanding the curvature in some sense, but uh, I mean, I have and, no and idea. Uh, related, do, do you know if, if afterwards is going to be involutive? Or... Excuse me? Sorry, sorry, say it again? If afterwards uh, you, you get involutivity, like, like when, when actually cohomology is second cohomology vanish? The wish prolongation. Uh, okay. But sorry, what is the question? So, so if you know at which levels, that's a homology actually vanish. No. Well, sorry. Uh, for the Galilei, for the Gal I don't know if this is a re uh, this might be related to the same thing. Uh, these are these are uh, G Galilei and Carroll uh, G structures are are not a finite type. So the prolongation no, is no, no. I don't say prolongation. I should say cohomology, right? Okay. 
That's, that's, oh. it, it doesn't matter. That's, that's fine for instance. Okay. I see. Okay. So I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I only, I've, I've really only computed this this one. But I think it would be interesting to, I mean, very, very interesting question. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay, then let's thanks Jose again. Okay, thanks.